Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Raven, over the past couple of uh, weeks, really since ever like the middle of season two, has been pretty vocal when it comes to how they want to change the Warzone meta. They want to push for diversity. They want to have people using as many different weapons as possible, whether that be 11, 12, 13 different rifles, uh, you know, eight, nine, 10 different SMGs. They want people to be using almost any weapon they want to use and have it be able to actually compete in the current meta. Now, as we've talked about in previous videos, the options you have in terms of weapons that are viable or competitive is greater than it's ever been, which is a fantastic thing. However, as I've sort of, uh, you know, looked at general loadouts recently, I've noticed there's a few things on every single loadout that are not diverse whatsoever. And honestly, I feel like this is something that could be changed in the future just because Raven is looking at a lot of things right now saying, okay, what is the community using a lot of? What is the community saying? Hey, this is, you know, kind of abused at this point. Obviously, we've seen things like the AUG, the M16, and the FFAR nerfed. We've even seen the AMAX nerf because a lot of people were still using that even after getting nerfed a few weeks back still. Uh, stopping power, that was a huge controversy. Some people really were not happy with how often it was appearing in game. They went ahead, they reduced the spawns. So Raven is definitely actively paying attention to what are the things that are being used the most that are also the most dominant in game? And that's sort of what leads me to believe that we could see some pretty drastic changes to loadouts here at some point in the near future. So as we go ahead and break all of this down, if you enjoy the video at any point, let me know by dropping a like on it. It would be seriously appreciated. And of course, if you're new to the channel or if you haven't already subscribed yet, I am always covering everything going on in COD, news, intel updates, all sorts of stuff like that. So feel free to subscribe, that way you can always stay up to date. All right, so we are here on Warzone Ranked. Of course, uh, this site is no stranger to the channel. We've visited this numerous times in uh, in previous videos. We get all sorts of really cool information from this site, but of course, what we wanna look at for this specific conversation is the Loadouts tab here at the top. Of course, we end up getting our whole meta coefficient. We've talked about this before. As of right now, it's like 0.73. It's in a fantastic place, one of the best places it's ever been. We can see what weapons are, you know, super popular right now. Obviously, the car, the AMAX, the Kilo, the Mac, the Ram, some of the more utilized weapons here. And like I said, Raven has stated multiple times that they are striving for diversity. So when you have a coefficient that's up here around 0.8, around 0.81, Things aren't going so great. Everyone's using the same weapons. And we've had this weapon uh, conversation before. Why things like the car and the AMAX are so, uh, you know, popular amongst the community. But what we want to look at today is the perks and the equipment. Because while the weapon meta right now is very diverse and very open, the same can't really be said for a few specific perks and then also some equipment as well. So let's go ahead. Let's look at the perks. Obviously, we have uh, much less to choose from here compared to the weapons where we have 90 plus to choose from we've only got six in every category so the popularity here is going to differ vastly compared to if we had you know 15 perks in every category so it's going to seem like it's uh you know scaled a little bit heavier there but uh the same conversation can be had regardless obviously in perk one things are you know they're more balanced than in perk two and perk three but there's still uh you know some dominance here double time and eod are used 44 and 30 percent respectively so 44 percent of players are using double time on their loadouts 30% are using EOD, 17% are using Cold-Blooded, then less than 6% are using Quick Fix, Kill Chain, and then also Scavenger. Why is that? Well, Double Time gives you that extra speed boost. A lot of players like that better mobility. Uh, so naturally, people are going to flock towards that, especially uh, like during the double AR meta. You didn't have much mobility, so players would go to that. They can, uh, they can get some better mobility out of their overall loadout. EOD has been a basic ever since day one. It's going to protect you from explosives. And when everyone has a frag, a claymore, a thermite, so on and so forth. Everyone's gonna be using something to protect against those. Cold-blooded, I feel like is an interesting one. I'm surprised so many people do use cold-blooded. 17% of players is relatively high, uh, comparatively speaking, but it doesn't really do anything for you. Like the thermal meta is long gone. And as you can see, players who are using cold-blooded don't have a very good KD. 0.77 is lower here. It's on the below average uh, side of things. I think average is like 0.9 to 1.1. So. Cold-blooded users typically aren't doing incredibly well. They're dying more than they're killing. And, uh, you know, for a reason, if people are using EOD or double time in perk one, you're getting more out of those perks. Cold-blooded right now doesn't really offer anything special. Quick fix is only, you know, viable in very, very specific situations. Why it's so underutilized. Kill chain is almost useless. And scavenger is pretty much completely useless because anytime you get somebody knocked or downed, they're going to drop SMG ammo. They're going to drop AR, sniper, whatever it is they're using and most of the time that's probably what you're using too so you get ammo for free you replenish equipment like that super easily scavenger has almost no purpose in warzone right now so from raven's standpoint you look at this and say wow everyone's using double time and eod pretty much 
people are starting to use cold blooded less and less. That's why that's why we got the red arrow, the down arrow there. How could you balance out perk one? Now I will admit, out of all the perks here, perk one, perk two, and perk three, perk one I think is the hardest to balance just because. Uh, double time does what it's supposed to do. If you wanted less people to use this, you'd probably have to decrease the mobility increase that it offers, the mobility benefit that it offers, which I don't think many people would like. Uh, EOD, to get people to use this less, and maybe go towards quick fix or, you know, cold blooded or something else, uh, you probably would have to, you know, allow certain equipment to be less effective if you have EOD and certain equipment to be more effective. Like say, uh, the thermite. If you get stuck by a thermite, if you're getting burned by a thermite, even if you have EOD, that wouldn't necessarily protect uh, as much compared to if you got hit by a Semtex or a Frag or something like that. But honestly, I think perk one for the most part is relatively well balanced. And that's just because these perks at the bottom here, Quick Fix, Kill, Chain, Scav, they don't just really have much of a purpose right now. They're not good perks uh, and they don't really serve you much of a benefit to run. You could try and buff these maybe with Quick Fix. Uh, like if you break somebody's armor, you get half of your armor back or something like that. Like if you're at a plate and a half and you break somebody's armor, you get bumped up to two plates. I don't know, but honestly, I think perk one is in the best state of all the perk slots. Uh, moving on to perk two, though, this is the big one. Ghost and Overkill dominate this perk category. Less than 2% of players use restock and high alert. Less than 0.5% of players use hardline and point man. As you can see, if you're using hardline, you got a 0.47 KD. That's not really that great. Overkill is surprisingly under one. I find that to be a bit interesting since almost everyone is using overkill uh in any given match because you want two primaries but i think also a lot of people might be using ghost off of one loadout then they grab their second loadout they still keep ghosts then they have their two desired primary weapons instead of getting overkill off the rip getting your two weapons right away and then getting ghost through a second loadout uh, but as you can see here ghost is used 53 percent of the time that is a pretty big imbalance restock high alert are both great perks and as you can see players who are using restock and high alert have really high kds 1.28 1.26 personally I always use restock and I think now since specialist is in the game and players are getting access to that more, they see the benefit of high alert where you get notified if someone is looking at you, unless they have cold blood. That's the sole purpose of running cold blooded right now. Uh, but people see that high alert actually is a pretty good perk a lot of the time. You get that situational awareness where you know a player's looking at you from the right or from the left or from behind. And that can be a big deal. And the KD proves that. Uh, so. How do you get less people using Ghost? Again, we're looking for diversity here. Raven has shown time and again, they're going to strive for the most diversity in as many different areas as possible. It's only a matter of time until perks get hit, I think. And honestly, I feel like Warson sort of needs that refresher. We can adjust perks and make the game feel a lot uh, fresher in that sense. So really here, high alert and restock, I don't think need changes because they work well for what they, uh, for what they are. If you wanted to change high alert, maybe you get uh, different notifications for different things. Uh, or for restock, maybe you get your equipment faster. The replenish time is, uh, is a little bit quicker than it is now. But honestly, I don't think you need to touch those. I think the primary issue here is Ghost. Overkill is a hard one to balance out because it's just giving you two weapons. Maybe uh, if you have a second primary, you can only have three attachments on it or something. And that would get people to use more perks instead. Uh, but Overkill, I don't think, is a huge issue. Ghost, though, is really the problem child in this category. And I think this the fix here is very simple. Currently, Ghost has no counter except for the actual advanced UAV, which currently you can only access via the uh, the whole Nakatomi Plaza Easter egg. And after that gets removed here, whenever that ends up happening and those map changes are reverted, there's going to be no way to counter Ghost yet again. Three UAVs equaling a, uh, a makeshift advanced UAV does not counter Ghost. Obviously, a regular UAV does not counter Ghost. Uh, the heartbeat sensor does not counter Ghost. Ghost is currently uncounterable with the exception of the actual AUAV. To me, I think the simple fix there would be to make Ghost work like it has in every COD since Black Ops 1. If you're standing still, it does not protect you on the minimap. Maybe it would from the heartbeat. We'll talk about that here in a moment. But if you're moving around, Ghost should work. If you're full sprinting across the forest and somebody has a UAV and you have Ghost, you should probably stay hidden. If you're posted up in a house behind a barricade with two claymores in front of you and you're on a UAV, you probably shouldn't be hidden unless you're actively running up and down the stairs, in and out of the rooms. You're making yourself run around, which then is going to give you footstep audio, which I feel like balances that out some. To me, Ghost is a bit busted right now, and I think that shows because over 50% of players are using it on their loadouts. So that's how I would adjust that. Hardline, point man, I don't think anyone's really ever going to use those as is, but really the first four here, I think, are what could shift some. And if they reduce Ghost, if they nerf Ghost in some capacity, I think Restock and High Alert suddenly jump up to 
seven, eight percent, nine percent. Way more players would start using those if Ghost wasn't so powerful. Um, and like I said, I think there's going to be an additional uh, point here that we can talk about in just a moment when we get over to the equipment. But real quick, looking at perk three as well, same conversation. Amped and Tracker make up for over 80% of what players are using, which is pretty insane in all honesty. Uh, Battle Hardened is not used that much, but again, I think there's more of a talking point later on. Uh, Tune Up is very situational just because it only helps with revives. Shrapnel, I feel like if you wanted to make it better, you could get like maybe three equipment rather than having two off the rip because like I said earlier, it's easy enough to just find equipment on the ground, so Shrapnel doesn't really have a huge place. And Spotter just doesn't really serve you much benefit outside of just a little bit of situational awareness, which you're probably going to get anyways. Um, so, those two, I don't really think serve a huge place in Warzone right now. Tune-Up could be if it had some better benefits, but again, it's only really used for faster revives, so I'm not really too sure what we'd be looking at there. Maybe if you revive somebody, they get more health off the rip rather than being 30% health or whatever it is. Uh, that could be a nice benefit to have. Battle Hardened in order to increase the popularity here, I think you just need better resistance against stuns and, uh, and flashes. Even now, if you're running Battle Hardened and you get stunned, it's really hard to counter that stun, especially if you're on keyboard and mouse. Stuns are pretty much a death sentence. On controller, if you get lucky with the aim assist, you have a chance in that fight, but most times, if you're stunned, if you're not looking directly at them, you're in trouble. It's probably going to be a quick gulag trip, so maybe that's how you balance out uh, Battle Hardened. Tracker despite being used 20% of the time, I feel like is in a pretty balanced state. It's really only viable in close range scenarios where you can see their footsteps. You're not going to be using that at 50 meters out, 60 meters out, so on and so forth. So it's a pretty niche uh, perk. Amped, again, I don't feel like it is necessarily overpowered. It's nice getting that faster weapon swap. Really, I think the deal here is making these other perks more beneficial rather than making Amped less beneficial just because Amped is a pretty basic one. Faster weapon swap on all weapons, you nerf that by making it a tad bit slower, but then it has no purpose whatsoever. Uh, so really, I think the balancing in perk three comes out to making tune up, making battle hardened, maybe even shrapnel and spotter more advantageous. Now, all that in all that in mind, what we want to look at specifically with perk two and perk three is ghost and battle hardened, because I feel like there's a direct correlation between those two perks. And when we look at the equipment, the heartbeat sensor. Now, the heartbeat sensor is used 61% of the time. Stuns are used 31% of the time, and that's pretty much all anyone is using when it comes to tacticals. Uh, real quick, just to get it out of the way, lethals, I don't feel like anything is really that busted here. Everything has a purpose. Zemtexes are used predominantly, uh, but with good reason. They're really beneficial when it comes to trying to force players out of, uh, you know, camping spots. It's good for pushing. Thermites are great for uh, vehicles, and then also forcing players out of spots. C4s are great for being an anti-vehicle. Uh, throwing knives are great for trying to get quick finishes. They don't really serve a huge purpose outside of that. And you don't really have a reason to use the frag over the Semtex. So overall, I'd say lethals are in a pretty good spot. I don't anticipate much uh, adjustments ever happening there. Tacticals, though, like I said, over 90% of players are using the same two tacticals. Why is that? Heartbeat sensor. If players don't have ghosts, this is a dead giveaway as to where a player is going to be. It's incredibly powerful, mainly because you can use it infinitely. There is no stopping a heartbeat sensor. You, you get it once on your loadout at the start of the game, you have it all the way until the end. I feel like the easiest way to balance out the heartbeat sensor is to, uh, you know, give it a battery, let's say. It starts with 100% every time you use it and it ticks out and, uh, you know, does that 40 meter, that 50 meter radius of is a player here. Every time it gets that tick, it's 5% off the battery. It's 7% off the battery. Then once it's gone, it's gone. Unless, of course, you get another loadout or you find a new one on the ground. And you can find used ones on the ground, like the gas mask. Uh, I feel like that's a very easy way to balance out the heartbeat sensor. And if the heartbeat sensor was balanced out and players weren't constantly using that, suddenly I feel like less players are going to be using Ghost. I feel like a lot of players use Ghost because the heartbeat sensor is on almost every single loadout. It's on three out of five loadouts. Uh, and if players aren't using the heartbeat sensor as much, they're probably using stuns. They're probably using flashes. Suddenly, Battle Hardened has more of a purpose. Even though it's not a surefire guarantee that the stuns aren't going to be a death sentence, it's, uh, it's a better chance of you surviving that fight. So there's, a like I said, a correlation between that. Heartbeat Sensor gets nerfed, Ghost is used less. Battle Hardened's used more because players are probably running stuns, flashes, and other equipment instead of just the Heartbeat Sensor and occasionally the stuns. So if we're looking at this from Raven's standpoint again, we've balanced out weapons because they were being overused. We balanced out stopping power because it was being abused. The heartbeat sensor is currently overused and abused. Perks like Ghost are overused and abused. Perks like Battle Hardened are really underutilized, despite potentially having a really big spot in the meta if certain things were balanced out. So when it comes to pushing diversity, we haven't seen changes to perks or equipment in a long, long time. 
I feel like it's only a matter of time until Raven does step up and finally change these things. Uh, but of course, let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comments below. Do you feel like this stuff is A-OK -okay as it is now? Or if it's not, what would you change instead? That is pretty much going to wrap things up for today. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully, this gave you some insight as to what could potentially be changing in the future. Of course, this is all just theorizing and speculating. By all means, this is not set in stone, but it's definitely possible, especially considering what Raven's been working on uh, as of late. But that is going to wrap things up for today. Hopefully, you enjoyed. If you did, let me know by dropping a like on it. And of course, if you're new here or if you haven't already subscribed, feel free to do so. That way, you can always stay up to date with everything going on in COD. Once again, and as always, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take it easy. Have an awesome rest of your day. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.